Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial video on my YouTube channel. My name is Mr. Olo and this is Vix Tutorials. So in today's tutorial video, I'll be showing you how I was able to create this logo design and you know also teaching you how you can create such a logo design. Now I uh, this logo design the concept was quite a playful one and it you know it all started as a very sketchy sketch that I just said, okay, fine, let me vectorize this on CorelDRAW. And after doing that and I applied colors and I uploaded it online, it had real positive feedbacks. And I had other creatives, you know, telling me to create a tutorial video on it. And here it is, a tutorial video on how I was able to create this logo design. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so in order to kick off with our tutorial, the next thing we are going to be doing is to bring in the sketch that I'll be using for this particular tutorial. So I'm going to go to my desktop, I'm going to look for my sketch and I'll bring it in drag and drop. So we're just going to wait for it to load. Now it has loaded, I will you know, position it, reduce it, then reduce it again. Then using my P, I'll position it to the middle of my workspace. So now that I have been able to bring in my sketch, now let the magic begin. But if you look closely into this particular logo, you can see how I was scribbling it on the paper, on the piece of paper, trying to make sure I get something. You know, I'm just playing around anyway. So just a playful thing. I'll just, you know, dishing out whatever was just coming to my head. That creativity at that moment was just, to just flow in. So you can see the thick lines, some places were thick, some were thin. I just, it was just me coming up with concept. But anyway, what we are going to be doing today is to make sure we try to trace around my sketch by, you know, by vectorizing it, you know, in order to vectorize this, I have to now sketch or let's say, you know, draw a thin line using the base here too. So we just draw a line across the sketch to position it in the way that it will enable us to be able to vectorize it and bring us something excellent from this particular uh, you know sketch that we are having right here on our screen So now the next thing we are going to be doing is uh, Also, you should know that if you are a correct if you are an Adobe Illustrator user You don't have to worry you can use the pen tool on Adobe Illustrator to you to go with this to work on this Or if you're a correct draw user. Well, this is a bonus for you Okay, but whichever software you're using whether Illustrator or correct draw you are good to go Just know the right tools to use in order to get this done So the next thing we're going to be doing is to make this transparent. So we're going to transparent it a little so we're going to make it 80% transparency in CorelDRAW. If it's Illustrator, you're going to make it 20% opacity if you're using Illustrator. Okay, so if it's CorelDRAW, you're making it 80% transparency. So the next thing, we're going to lock it. So we're going to lock this, our stuff right here, okay? So that it doesn't disturb us when we are when we started working on the on the tracing. Let me put it over here, so on the tracing. So that it doesn't disturb us while we are working on the tracing. So we'll have to, we'll have to um, unlock it first. Okay, we we'll just have to right click. Okay, when we right click, we go back to lock and we lock it. If you're using Illustrator, it's Ctrl 2. If, I'm, if I can remember correctly, it's Ctrl 2 to lock it on Illustrator. Why in CorelDRAW, you can just right click on the image, then go back to lock in order to lock it. So now that it has been locked, now our tracing can begin. So uh, let's zoom in so that we can have a good proportion of the stuff. So we're going to go over to our freehand tool. Then we go over to our freehand tool. Then we look for the Bezier tool. Okay, we look for the Bezier tool. So we activate the Bezier tool and we can start sketching. So you just have to follow my lead. Just follow it. You see the way the mouse is moving. So that's the direction we will be going into this sketch. So you just follow the lead at which I am sketching it al along the path of. Uh, sorry, the, the, the way I'm tracing it along the path of the sketch. So just go. Don't worry. Your 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 using your base here to with this tracing it must it be perfect, okay? But don't worry. I will show you how you can perfect it after we after we, we are done tracing it. So it doesn't have to be extremely perfect at this beginning stage or at this tracing stage, okay? Just follow. Just make sure you follow the path of the sketch. Just make sure you follow the path of the sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect at this initial stage, okay? So I'll be showing you how you can perfect it later on. So let's just round it up and uh, be done with this. And um, voila, yeah, we had a little bit of error. So let's just follow this this way. It can be, you know, Bezier too can be quite tricky. So you just have to be 
you know you just have to you know just be careful at, at the way you are doing it so now we are done with our sketching sorry with our tracing uh, anyone you want sketching tracing now we are done with it we just have to unlock this our sketch so we go back to right click okay once you right click you unlock it and uh, once we've unlocked it we can push it aside and keep it aside we are done with that and now you can see our traced work is right here appearing in front of us so now we can go over and uh, start correcting the distortion so if you look at this what we've done so far you can see that there are a lot of little little distortion so let's increase the weight first so let's increase the weight we have increased the weight uh, not the weight is not much so let's just impute the weight manually so we're going to be using 30 uh, is 30 okay I think 30 is cool okay so if you look at it very well you can see that we have some distortions okay you can see that some places are not smoothed out it's not smooth it's not well called okay <clears throat> so as you can look at that very well you can see that error so we are going to correct those errors so we are just going to reduce the hairline back or the outline or the stroke we are going to reduce it and then we go back to our shape tool so we activate our shape tool and we can start working on the nodes okay on the account point anyone you want to anyone you know it as you can work on the nodes or the account point so if you look at it very well you can see the you can see that as you're working on the nodes you can see how the whole curves are correcting themselves but you have to be very careful you can see we made an error there so you have to be very careful when you're working on nodes so that you don't uh, you know you don't uh, work on the wrong nodes so work on the right nodes as it will enable you so you see as we are working on the nodes you can see how seamless our, our traced work is now becoming you can see how rounded and well curved it now is so you can see how the whole stuff is very very is looking very very smooth so what we are going to do is to copy okay we are going to copy that our uh, work. then we put this then we undo using ctrl z and we put this our distorted work by the other side and we put our corrected work by this side and you can see the absolute beauty and difference between the both of them that is the work of the shape tool when you are just needing to manipulate your nodes or your account point on your lines or on your traced work or stuff like this. This is a very useful tool that can help that can help you to correct certain mistakes when you are designing logos in this manner. Okay, sometimes it just it's like a it's like a mini AI that just helps you to curve necessary areas. It's like it knows that this part is supposed to be smoothly curved. So it just helps you do that. But you can see in our corrected version you can see that you can see the difference. The difference is absolutely clear. So now that we have been able to see the difference in the distortion so we are just going to uh, maybe push the distorted one aside and then start working on the corrected version okay so you can see how the difference is so you're just going to push one aside and we can start working on the corrected version so if you look at this other old one had so many nodes why this one just had one single node okay now you can see that we removed one other node and we now have five nodes in the corrected version why this other version had so many nodes okay just make sure you don't work on don't do wasabi that's just the thing don't for we Niger, from, from for my nigerian guys who understands don't do wasabi you can see we, we made an error there because he didn't give us the correct code because of how we we we, 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 we deleted out nodes so now since that is settled we're just going to increase the outline so you can now see the visible difference between the both of them and you can see now you can see the difference you can see how smooth the other one is and you can see how distorted and contouring the other one is <laughs> don't mind my grammatical uh you know playfulness it's just me being let's move on so now that we've done this we're just going to go to over to to create a balance we're just going to go over to um to my text tool and we're going to write exquisite okay we're going to write exquisite contour because that was the name that was the fictional name i used for the logo we're just going to write exquisite contour okay so i think i'm having problem with this contour is, is this spelling actually correct let's go back to google and just search for contour let's go back to google and search for the real spelling of contour yeah this is me i am someone that i love showing my process okay sometimes we can be so drowned in the design project that we even forget how to spell it it or uh we even forget how to spell so many things okay but having google at the tip of your finger to help you out in some uh spellings can really really be can really really be very very important and can be very helpful so it's very important that we we can be able to have access to google so let me just activate my wi-fi and uh, let's just search for contour exquisite okay let's search for exquisite and uh, okay we were correct i think we're correct with our exquisite 
Yes, we are correct to our SQL. So let's work from contour. Let's see if we can remember the spell of contour. It's very important. Now, this is something every designer needs to note. Okay? Always proofread your work. Make sure your spellings are correct. You wouldn't want a situation where you submitted a project to a client and a client is like now seeing you so unprofessional because of some misspelled words. So always make sure your spellings are what are correct so that you don't find yourself in such an unprofessional or uh, in an unprofessional situation. So now we have gotten our spellings. Now if you look at very well, you can see that when we reduced, when we reduced the size of this our traced work, traced logo. You could see that it became fatter. The, the, the outline or the stroke became fatter as it reduced. Now, that can be very, very bad for your design because you need design need to be scalable. So to fix that, we go over, we select the stuff and we go over to, uh, we select the, 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 the trace one, we go over to objects, then we convert outline to object. Or you can use Ctrl Shift Q on your keyboard. Now, when you reduce it, it remains the same. So when you scale it up or scale it down, it remains the same okay unlike before that when we scaled it down the stroke was you know that can be very very bad for because your logo design is something that will be used in different sizes like it can be scaled down it can be scaled up so we're going to choose the font and the font i used was montserrat alternate bold montserrat alternate bold was the font i used for this particular logo so uh that is it that is basically the logo and we are done for the day now to uh yeah just select both and just tap in E to align them to the middle. So uh, let's push the, 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 the logo type a bit to uh, a side. Let's just put the logo type a bit. Uh, but before that, let's put it at the middle, the main logo mark. So to give it a balance, we go over to our ellipse tool and we create a little circle under. Okay. Uh, while holding our shift, control key and we color it black and remove the outline color also. So mind you, I'm using Corridor 2021 for this tutorial. So now, in order to give to make sure that this is actually balanced to the bottom of the logo mark, we will select the both of them and press B. Okay, select both of them and press B. You can see that when I use our ruler, you see that it's actually aligned to the bottom of the uh, of the logo mark. So uh, this is a very helpful, uh, you know, shortcut for you to use as a designer. It, it increases your workflow. Okay, if you want to take it to the top, you just select both and type T. T is to take things to the top and B is to bring things to balance together at the bottom. So now we have our logo mark balanced with the little dot beside it. Now we are going to now test uh, these our logos in the black and white mode. Okay, so we are going to draw now what we're going to be using for our power clips. So 1000 by 1000 pixels is what we'll be using for our you know, power clipping. 1000 by 1000 pixels. So P to align to the middle, then we select everything that we have here on our screen. So we select everything that we have here on our screen and then we power clip it into the, um, into the, we just power clip everything into that background, into our workspace. So now I can go into our, I can go into our, 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 our power clip and, um, and then create a background for it. The background we'll be using for solid colors. So I'll just create a background to cover it up. We'll be using for, uh, uh, so we be using for our solid colors. So the next thing is to color it white because we need to test our logo in black and white. So shift page down to take it to the back. So to take the background to the back anyway. So we're going to test this in black and white. So let's, this is black and white for it. Now it looks very fine. So we're now going to test it in, this is black on white. Now we're going to test it in white on black. And this is looking very, very gorgeous and adorable. Now, that is something I always tell my students. Whenever you've designed a logo, always test it in black and white. If your logo design works in black and white, it will absolutely 100% work in colored version. So, they never, ever neglect the black and white rule. I call it the black and white rule. It's very important for logo designers to note this. When you're designing a logo, always test it out in black and white first before applying colors. In fact, sometimes before you even... In fact, for, to show your client what you've done, send it to them in black and white, okay? Send it to them in black and white. If it's a situation where they even accept it in black and white, just know that your logo don't blow. Your logo has blown. Now, you imagine adding colors to this, man. This is this would be very, very exquisite. Yes, it would be very, very exquisite. And if you're enjoying this tutorial video, please hit the like button as this will be very, very exquisite to our channel. Yes, uh, so we are going to also test. So let's just shift this aside. The, the logo type so then we position it back in the middle with P 
position it back in the middle but I, i'm thinking this is too thin for the font we're using so we're going to increase the outline a bit and i don't know it just it just is personal thing i feel the i feel the the logo mark is too thin for the kind of font we are using you know for the kind of font we are working on so let's let's reduce let's increase the outline then do the same thing by uh you know by converting the outline to to curve to object sorry so we're going to increase the outline a bit so let's increase it to three i think three is okay let's see four okay four is nice so we select it we go back to object convert outline to objects then we select everything together and then we weld this now brings everything together now we can select everything group it with ctrl g then position to the center with p and there we have it so this is uh now this is the black and white this is absolutely beautiful like personally this is this is this is the bomb i just love this logo this logo is very simple straight to the point and we are done so i'm going to be turning this video into a series now this is the beginning part where i show you guys how to create the vectorized version out of the sketch so in subsequent videos because i plan on turning this into like a full brand identity project so in the next tutorial video i'll show you how i was able to come up with the colors i will be using that will be using and in this other subsequent video probably will not work on uh, the presentation and the and the mock-ups and all that so that is all there is in this video so thank you guys for watching if you love this video please hit the like button and subscribe to our youtube channel as this will help us to grow and if you want to improve your skills in graphic design please please and please click on any video showing on your screen and until the next time we meet stay safe and stay healthy catch you namaste